Our scripture passage this morning comes from the 37th chapter of the book of Ezekiel, the first 14 verses. Listen, hear, and receive God's word for us. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. God led me all around them, and there were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. God said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then God said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come up on you and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come up on them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then God said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then God said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This month, our preaching theme is being human. Last Sunday, Pastor BJ reminded us that as humans, we are creatures made of composted material, humus, dirt. God breathed dust finite, temporary, limited. We don't know everything. We sometimes make mistakes. We are fallible. We sin. And it is in this place of being uncertain, unsure, sinful, and faithless that transformation can and does take place. Okay, I don't plan to preach Pastor BJ's sermon again although I liked it a lot. Um, But it certainly was a wonderful setup for today's lectionary passage. The first 14 verses in the 37th chapter of the book of Ezekiel are familiar. Most people have either read this passage or heard a sermon or two based on it. And according to one commentator, there are more than 80,000 references to this biblical passage on Google. Who knew? The Valley of Dry Bones is the third of four visions that were experienced by the prophet and priest Ezekiel. The Israelites, they were in exile and under the control of rulers who did not know their God when the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel. Ezekiel was not prophesying from a distance. He was not in Jerusalem with the remnant that had been left behind. He was right there with the people of God who had been taken into exile. Ezekiel experienced all the injustices and the degradation, the famine and the maltreatment, the hopelessness, fear, and longing for the life that they once knew along with everyone else. And it was while in this state of displacement, wandering and wondering that the hand of the Lord was on Ezekiel and he was commissioned to speak. Did you get that? He was right there with the people. 
Commentator Kelton Cobb states, the core of the biblical narrative is the story of displacement, of having wandered a long way from home and longing to return. This is the underlying plot of being cast out of Eden, of being foreigners in Egypt, of the journey to the promised land, and of the longing of exiles in Babylon to return to the land of their ancestors." End of quote. Beloved, being in a state of transition, a state of not knowing, a state of uncertainty, is part of our human condition. Occasionally, we have all experienced metaphysical, emotional, physical, or spiritual displacement. Truth be told, none of us has the ability to know what we will face, encounter, or experience with the dawning of each new day. And we have all lived through personal, professional, and corporate times of transition, longing for what was, grieving loss or change. We have all suffered periods of anxiety, fear, doubt, and hopelessness. All of those are part and parcel of being human. And despite, or possibly in spite of our human condition of reminiscing, longing for, wanting to be in control or to know the future, we are not alone. God is always with us. God always sends signs and symbols, messages and messengers to encourage, to console, to lead and to remind us that things are not always as they seem in the economy of God. Now before we arrived at today's passage in the 36th chapter of Ezekiel, God instructs him to assure the exiles by stating, O oh, you mountains of Israel shall shoot out your branches, you O oh, mountains of Israel shall shoot out your branches and yield your fruit to my people Israel, for they shall soon come home. See now I am for you, I will turn to you and you shall be tilled and sown and I will multiply your population, the whole house of Israel, all of it. The town shall be inhabited and the waste places rebuilt, and I will multiply human beings and animals upon you. They shall increase and be fruitful, and I will cause you to be inhabited as in your former times and will do more good to you than ever before. Then you shall know that I am the Lord." After speaking these words of assurance, promise of restoration, and revivication, God immediately led and set Ezekiel down in a valley of dry bones. Bones that were completely devoid of skin, flesh, and muscle. Bones that are, were completely disarticulated and desiccated by the heat of the sun, strewn in a desolate, dry, and deserted valley. Now, if I were to use my sanctified imagination, I believe that as Ezekiel's eyes surveyed the scene, in silence he wondered, why am I here? Isn't it enough that I've had to endure living in exile and the ridicule of people who do not know my God? I've prophesied to the people who will not listen, receive, or hear what thus says the Lord. And didn't God just give me a word of hope? restoration and return to speak to God's people and it was in that moment that once more God spoke directly to Ezekiel asking mortal can these bones live is it possible for the dry bones of grief anger disappointment and disillusionment to live is it possible for the bones of change, transition, waiting, and expectation to live? Is it possible for the dry bones of misinformation, misunderstanding, or miscommunication to live? People of God, when we find ourselves in places we judge or define as lifeless, dried up, the probability of ever returning to a former state being almost nil to none? Do we perceive that restoration, revivication, and transformation are possible? Now we know that with God all things are possible, but are we willing to sit in uncomfortable, unfamiliar, and uncertain places while God works everything out for our good? Earlier this morning, G read a passage from the 11th chapter of the Gospel of John about the death of Lazarus, Jesus' friend, who died 
despite the fact that Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha, had sent for Jesus days before, requesting that he come because Lazarus was ill. Jesus tarried, not because he wasn't concerned about his friend's health, but because he knew that God was up to something. When Jesus and his disciples arrived, Lazarus was dead and had been laying, laying in the tomb for four days. Decomposition had set in, and from Martha and Mary's perspective, all hope was gone. But as Jesus stood outside that tomb and called to Lazarus, Lazarus got up. He was awakened by the Spirit of God, and he came out of the tomb, risen from the dead. Siblings in Christ, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are able to do exceedingly and abundantly more and above that which we are able to ask, think, imagine, or even perceive. God is able to give new life to dreams, hopes, aspirations, and plans that we thought were dead or ours to control. O oh, mortal, can these bones live? The prophet replied, Oh, Lord God, you know. And then God told Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones and to say to them, Oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come up on you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. Yes, it was God who instructed Ezekiel what to say, but it wasn't until Ezekiel prophesied as God commanded that something actually began to happen. Commentator Will Gaffney writes, God calls dreamers, daydreamers, and visionaries, people who see the world beyond the world, the world as it is and the world as it could be. God calls to people who believe in the supernatural and sometimes those who don't. And God speaks to hearts and minds and even ears, perhaps not everyone who hears voices from God, but that does not mean that God is not speaking. I don't hear from God the way Ezekiel did, Gaffney writes, but I do hear from God. I am a thoroughly modern woman, she says, yet I believe in what I can't see and in what perhaps only I can see. And I listen, she says, with my heart, my head, and my hands. End of quote. Ezekiel hears God and responds by speaking as instructed and suddenly a noise erupts. The bones begin to rattle and they come together, bone to bone, sinew and flesh appear and skin covers the bone but life has not been fully restored. There is no breath in the yet still dead bodies. Once again, God speaks to Ezekiel telling him to prophesy to the breath. Now, as I pondered this passage yesterday, the wind was blowing ferociously outside my house. And I imagined that that was exactly how the four winds, the ruah, the breath of life blew as it rushed into the still lifeless bodies. And now filled with the breath of life, those who were lifeless disassembled and dry, strewn in the desert valley, stood on their feet and they came to life. Will Gaffney writes again, God spoke to Ezekiel, not for his own sake, but for the sake of his community. God came to God's people when they were in desperate need at the point many would have said that it was already too late. In our own times of desperation, are we listening to and looking for God? End of quote. We have almost come to the end of Lent, but perhaps it's not too late for us to listen and to look for God and to consider what dry bones are present in our lives and to discern what we can learn from the lonely, uncertain, disconnected, fearful, and anxious times on our spiritual journey. Those places may very well be where transformation takes place. I pray that we are not sitting in a dry desert place of our own making, 
waiting for what's next. I've stopped by to tell you that this is what's next until God says so. Until God sends the next opportunity, the next ministries, the next pastoral leadership. If we are so focused on what we desire or hope for or perceive to be next, we will miss what God is doing right now. Right now, God is up to something. I believe that every time the wind blows, it reminds us that our faithful God is with us and that that same faithful God has prepared and positioned messengers, pastors to instruct, lead, guide, and to walk with you all in this season. I pray that every time the breath of life rushes over us, joy and peace, trust and faithfulness, hope and grace are enlivened within us. And I pray with each breath that we take in, we realize that we are yet living, breathing, and have our very being in God. And we are right now, right where God would have us to be for such a time as this. Beloved, now is the time to be about God's business as the faithful people of God. Now is the time that God asks us to respond to the question, can these bones live? Only God knows. Amen.